to our worst films of 2022. Uh, if you guys have been around for our previous uh, times when we've done this, either on, the, I think, specials or Let's Be Reals. Yeah. Yeah, basically what we do when we um, do our list is we just do it one at a time. We start from the bottom, so the third worst film, um, and then moving up to second and first, and we just kind of explain our options there. And we'll do the same with our um, top 10 films of 2022 as well. Mm-hmm. So, Nan, kick us off. Worst films of 2022. What is your third worst? My third worst yep. is Jurassic World Dominion. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all know that I'm a big Jurassic Park fan, and that's more... I thought you are a Jurassic World fan. Oh, fuck you, cunt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's more because of, you know, the first Jurassic Park, but, like, having like the original characters come into this, I was a little bit more excited and mm. then you knew how yeah. excited I was to see that. And then w- watching the film was just completely different. I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, that's what we got from that. It, it was more of a disappointing film for me in terms of my expectations, but it was also really bad. Like, you know, mm. like Locus has been the main point of whatever the hell it was. I, I completely forgot now extension level event or something was. It? I can't remember. Oh, they were like, Growing it like a rapid play. Oh, right? yeah, and, yeah, and needing all the crops and stuff. I was like, <laughs> like all the food <laughs> supply. <laughs> and I was like, why could you not just like make it dinosaurs? And you know, um, the second Jurassic World ended on that like little tears of Jurassic, oh, of dinosaurs and humans mm. integrating together. Finally. Finally, we barely saw that really, like, first like half an hour. The, was the chasing was the, a Malta was cool. That was cool. That's yeah. probably the best part of the film. Definitely, yeah. Um, but yeah, like we barely saw that sort of integration between, mm. you know, oh, I want to try to say dinosaurs and humans. Yeah. I mean, it would have been cool, like if we were on it, like we just see a farm and like seeing like, you know, how like uh, humans like use dinosaurs to like farm animals similar to what they do with um, real life animals. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no. that's me. What's your number three? My number three? Thor, Love and Thunder. Mm. Oh, that low. Okay. That low. Oh, yeah, I was expecting like to be number one. Like that low as in like, it should be higher on my worst or lower on my, or like not. I was expecting it to be number one. Oh, really? Um, Well, first of all, I'm, I don't go into Thor, Love and Thunder like thinking this is going to be like a great thing. Um, I've based some of my choices on like my expectations and my anticipation. So it kind of balanced it out. Uh, Thor, Love and Thunder is a bad movie. Um, we went and saw it at the premiere and yeah, we came out of it immediately being like, yep, this is not good. Yeah. It's just full of cringe humor. There's no depth to any of the characters. Thor is a bumbling clown jock, (laughs) uh, doing nothing. Korg is comedy oversaturated. Um, just super unfunny. Just, I, I, I can't even like really articulate how annoying this movie makes me feel <laughs> i think i think it's like it's marvel's abomination i think it's their worst film yeah i'll say that much um but, worse than uh the dark world yeah easy because the dark world has parts that you may like about it um you know it's shot in location so it looks nicer yeah um the character work with um thor they take him they take it a little bit more seriously yeah. Like, it just seems like Taika Waititi slept in, woke up, went to set and be like, <laughs> oh, oh, I, we got to film today. Um, Oh, just start making jokes about um Hammer being jealous of the other Hammer. Oh, yeah. And just like, <laughs> oh, let's have like a, a Yui boom. Oh, and then dear. just like, yeah, just, yeah, no, see, it, it, do, it doesn't feel like in, there's any seriousness there. Yeah. Um. Oh, and Christian Bale was a villain in the MCU and they um, wasted his talent. That's another reason to be salty from me. <laughs> um, but yeah, second worst film, 2022, what you got? Lightyear. <laughs> Starman. <laughs> Star. Fuck, this, this song's going to be stuck in my head now. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Lightyear. Oh, I nearly, nearly had that one. You nearly did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think it wasn't, it was a pretty bad film. It was unjustifiable as well. Like, no one cared about Mm-hmm. Buzz Lightyear like no one wanted it yeah. like it was unneeded and then that whole scene of where like the two um, lesbian um, yeah. 
woman, yeah. like they're doing like a montage, and then one of them is suddenly pregnant. It's just like they don't really give us like from just watching it. It just doesn't make sense. It's just thrown in there just for the sake of it. Yeah, to, yeah, to send messages and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, yeah, it was just really bad, and I mm-hmm. think Chris Evans could have never lived up to the hype of um, Tim Allen. Yeah, I think if Tim if Tim Allen voiced Lightyear, it could have been. It, it could have it saved would have been it more a, enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Like mm. you know, because he he's it's just an iconic voice. It's like an un- iconic character, yeah. an iconic voice. Like you can't imagine Darth Vader not being voiced by anyone else other than James Earl Jones. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's one of my reasons. Like it's just and it's a cash grab, and that's probably why I find it really bad. <laughs> So far, the funny thing is though is that it was like one of the least profitable films. Yeah. I think it lost like 120 million for the company. Yeah, uh, which is a, a good thing. Um, but I, I, I told you, I told <laughs> Kyan, I told everybody <laughs> that I'd ever met in my life, this is a dumb film. Don't make it. And then the trailer came out. And everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, this looks so cool and interesting." And it. The animation's great. And I'm like, no, this is shit. There's no reason that this should be a movie. And then the movie comes out and, no, yeah, I was proven correct. Um, so that's why it's not on my worst movies um, is because I went into this being like, I, this, this can't work. We'll see, but I don't see it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, judging from what you just said, I think I was correct on that. My second one though, I think this might surprise you. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Is it because of like the hype surrounding it and just not living up to expectations? Yeah, it's whatnot? it's the hype surrounding it. Um, it's not like it's a bad film in itself. It's just what it presented itself to be. Bad film in itself. Yeah, you are right. It's not like it's not the worst movie by in ter- if you look at it from like an objective point of view. Yeah. If you're talking about my subjective point of view, it's all my worst films of the year because one, I was really anticipating it. Two, Sam Raimi was directing. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's a really talented director. I thought he would do some interesting stuff. It was going to, it was, it's called The Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. Um, the trailers, like, they raised that hype. There was, I think, yeah, it came after No Way Home as well. So you had that element to it. And there was just like so much going for it. And yeah, we got just, it was very disappointing. I don't think the movie is coherent or good. Mm -hmm. I'd I'd call it average. There are certain parts of things that I like. I like the, you know, musical fight between Sinister Strange and Mr. Strange and, I mean, Dr. Strange, Mr. Strange. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and there was some like, Sam Raimi definitely brings his directing style into it and, you know, use of flashy cuts and little different editing styles and whatnot. Yeah. But overall, I think the movie is a mess. Um, it hadn't know what to do. It doesn't really justify Scarlet Witch's um, being a villain yeah. um, very well. So considering we, the last we saw Scarlet Witch, she was a hero. Well, well it's wonder- some, somewhat of a hero, you know? Yeah. I, that character's really gone down the drain. I don't know what they're doing. Like, they yeah. her. I don't know why she has to be a villain. Um, but yeah, it's a mixture between the anticipation, the expectations, and what we got. Um, a big letdown. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Doctor Strange, second worst for me. I think I know your number one. What is your number one worst film of 2022? <laughs> Avatar The Way of Water. Oh, don't even <laughs> joke about that. That's too far. <laughs> nah, it's Thor, Thor Love and Thunder. Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, it was just... I don't think we enjoyed that film at I mean, sorry, you, you covered every single part yeah. so well in your point three that I'm just not even going to touch that. Um, but like, we were just not enjoying ourselves in that film. Like, I can't even remember the screening. I can barely remember the movie myself. Yeah. Um, apart from like the criticisms we had on that drive back home. Yeah. It was just bad. And like, you said it before in your final comments, it was the waste of Christian Bale. Yeah. As a villain. And he was literally the best part. He was like yeah. the only time I was actually engaged in watching that film. And mm. I was like, damn, like he need I wish we saw a bit more of Christian Bell in the MCU. Yeah. But I don't think he can ever get cast again. Um, because he fucking squandered that. Yep. And That's annoying. I have. Yeah, it's just dumb. You you the comedy's off, you know. So too much Taika, too much Korg is just Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
I really thought with um, the movie, um, I, I went into the movie thinking that Taika had a really unique sense of comedy, the way James Gunn is. Yeah. You, you know, like, he's just funny. And what he does is just, it's genuinely funny. Uh, it's not forced. It's it's natural. It feels all natural and stuff. But I think he just like went <sighs> he doubled ham down on it. Over. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "Oh, Thor, Thor Ragnarok work. Let's just up it ten times. Yeah. People wants to see a rock statue thing. Yeah. Don't chuck that in." I mean, the Marvel, or not the, the MCU is just it's filled with cringe moments from the first Iron Man to the, the latest thing. There's always cringy kind of stuff. But Thor Love and Thunder is just constant. It's, it's so much cringe. Yeah. Yeah. It's just parts where I could barely like stomach it. Yeah. I was like, what is it, this? And you're right. That speaker scene was probably one of the cringiest. Like it was just. <sighs> yeah. And then like you got the whole plot line with Jane Foster having, what was it? Stage three or four cancer. But having a and then, foot. And then full, just dies. Yeah. Uh, but that, but she had a full head of hair the whole time. <laughs> it was just like. <laughs> yeah. It was like. Because they're not going to, you know, make Natalie Portman bored and. A major blockbuster. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's been bald before, though. Like, in a role. I don't know what role. I think you are right about that, yeah. But it's just like, if you're going to commit to, like, having someone with that severe yeah. of disease, like, commit to mm. actually show it. But no, she, like, looked fantastic the whole time. Yeah. And then there's, like, parts where she's, like, she's trying to find, like, her tagline. Oh, like, catchphrase. Yeah, catchphrase. <laughs> That's like, also very cringy. Eat my hammer. It's oh. like when it's like a big moment. It's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. But the Christian Bale parts were, were nice. Yeah. All right. What is your number one worst film of 2022? I don't know if you've guessed it, but um, I, th- I think when I say it, it'll be pretty obvious. Uh, Fantastic Beast Secrets of Dumbledore. To be honest, I fully thought that's a 2021 film. Uh, yeah. I, don't know. I like, <laughs> saw it. I'm like, oh, that's easily number one. Yeah. But now you say, I was like, oh, fuck, they did come out like very early last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I understand why that's. Uh, that's yeah. a number one. It, it, it's very similar to your reasons for uh, Jurassic World, except I really had no reason to be excited for it. And I wasn't excited for it. Uh, that's how bad it is. Uh, Fantastic Beasts have been a disaster pretty much from the beginning. The first one I thought was a nice, fun adventure. Uh, second one was a boring, very boring piece of garbage. Um, and, and, and this one's pretty much the same. It really tries to... Um, lean hard on the Harry Potter nostalgia, but it just feels off. It feels like a CGI fest. The uh, romantic slash hatred relationship between Dumbledore and Grindelwald is weird and unbalanced and not explored properly. Yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm watching. I'm like, what, what even is this? It's not Harry Potter. It doesn't feel anything like it. And as a huge Harry Potter fan, um yeah this is just an absolute disappointment um and i'm ready for another 10 years of disappointment from the <laughs> harry potter universe <laughs> the one thing i really didn't like about that for i mean there was a lot but the one that like really got with me was like i don't know what it's called mm. but i'm gonna call it the little death thing that little fucking death thing that like you know sees someone with a pure of heart and whatnot and right the, this is at oh, the end yeah. this is at I, the end i forgot that yeah. yeah and he goes to dumbledore and then dumbledore is like no, you can't choose me. Um, yeah. It's just not allowed. And then he goes to a random character that we've never seen before. It's just like, why don't you not just have it go to Newt Scamander that we've seen him be like good and whatnot, yeah. you know? Like, that would mean so much more than going to some random fucking yeah. act, uh, character that we've never seen before. And like, why are you more worthy over Dumbledore? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, I know that dare thing, but I don't remember much about it. I, but I remember coming out of that movie and being like, this doesn't make sense. Why is this like... But in Harry Potter, they said you can't do this. And it's just like, it doesn't even know what it's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's David Yates. who has to direct everything involved with Harry <laughs> Potter. He directed like the last four Harry Potters and then directed all of the Fantastic Beast movies. It's the only job he can get. Was he directed for Harry Potter 5? Yes, I think it was his first one. It's sort of been 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then... Yeah. Fantastic one, one two, two, three. three. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fully expecting um, an announcement that Davy Yates will direct the entire <laughs> was, Harry Potter I was series. About, I was about to say, surely he's directing the Harry Potter series. <laughs> no, no. I think no. I think that whole thing would just be a podcast special. And it'll just be me saying, being the host. I'll be like, James, what are your thoughts on this? And James just ranging off for an hour. 
<laughs> just I, I could go on about an hour. It would be a special. Um, but yeah, that, that's enough talk about um, some bad part 